Hello students, welcome to Education on Cloud. So yesterday we saw some of the important questions under this chapter called as typical configuration of computer system. Okay, so we have studied the first one, what is motherboard and the different components on the motherboard and the short note on the primary memory. This is also completed and explain cache memory. These three we saw it in the yesterday's class. Now we will see the fourth question which is explain different types of IO inputs like IO ports okay they are talking about types of IO ports so in the components we saw you had one component which is IO ports and interface so what is the use of IO ports and interface to connect any external input output device to the computer means to the which is internally connecting to the motherboard okay for that whatever the ports you are using those are called as IO ports under that again you have different types of ports available so this question is asking us to explain each one of the ports that comes under IO ports okay so we will write that so explain different types of IO in IO ports the classification or the types of ports are COM parallel uni like USB port PS2 connectors and IDE drive connectors so these are the five different types of IO ports that you can see on the motherboard first you should list then you can go for uh, explaining each one of them so what is a COM or a serial port is also called as component object model com is an abbreviation of component object model similarly universal series bus a serial bus in short you will call it as usb connectors and you have ide drive connectors ide is nothing but integrated drive electronics so there are total five ports we will explain each of the port now so first one is com port or you can call it as a serial port it is used for connecting communication devices like modems or mic okay if you want to connect the modem which is used for network routing okay so that modem or a mic if you want to connect to the computer system or to the motherboard you will be using the port called as serial port or the com port serial ports provide the serial transmission of data of one byte at a time serial transmission is nothing but what one after the other the data will be transmitted continuously parallelly no informations are carried whenever you have the serial ports if you are sending one byte so after sending this one byte one successful transmission back of that another byte of information will be sent see they are saying serial transmission of data of one byte at a time you cannot carry two bytes only one byte can be transmitted through this serial port there are two ports commonly under this com ports one is the 9 pin port and 25 pin ports okay this is about com port so next comes the parallel ports it's just reverse of this the car information is traveled in a parallel like parallelly the transmission is happening no serial transmission is taking place here and these ports are used to connect external input output devices like scanners or the printers scanner is an input device printer is an output device likewise any ex uh, input and output device if you want to connect it externally you will be using the parallel ports they facilitate the parallel transmission of data of one byte at a time parallel ports use 25 pin rs 232c okay so here one byte of data is carried here one bit here it comes one byte what is the difference 
like this if you add 8 bits together you will call that as a 1 byte so at a time in the parallel ports 8 byte or uh, means 8 bits can be carried so we will call it as 1 byte of data can be transmitted parallelly okay so at the same time you can carry the uh, more information also they are saying okay so parallel transmission will happen and for this they are using 25 pin rs 232c okay so next one is usb connectors so this usb connectors are used for first we will see what is this usb provides high speed data transfer for plug and play devices okay if you externally want to connect to something to the monitor or the computer you will be using this esp uh, like usb okay so this will provide the high speed data transfer for plug and play devices like keyboard mic scanners printers digital cameras thumb drives and etc the data transfer speed in usb is 1.0 which is 12 MB per second and in USB 2.0 it is 480 MB per second and USB 3.0 it is 5 gigabytes per second so these are the versions in USB 1.0 the data transfer rate is 12 Mbps per second okay and in 2.0 you have 480 MB per second and 3.0 you have 5 GB per second so this is the data transfer speed USB allows multiple devices as many as up to 127 to run simultaneously on a computer and what about AGP port so AGP port is called as accelerated graphics port okay this is an advanced port designed for video cards and 3D accelerators designed by the Intel. AGP is to provide enhanced graphic accelerator cards thus enhancing the picture quality of the screen. This is what the explanation you must give for AGP port. So who was using this AGP that was uh, like who designed that designed by the Intel and this is providing the graphics accelerator cards okay that uses or that enhances the picture quality for that you will be using AGP ports and next one is PS2 connectors so PS is nothing but personal system PS2 stands for personal system slash 2 which are used to connect input devices like personal systems keyboards or mics if you want to connect this you will be using the personal system to keep uh, ports there and next one is IDE drive connector IDE devices like hard disk CD-ROM drives are connected via the 40 pin ribbon cable okay so you will have this IDE devices such as hard disk and CD-ROM drivers if you want to connect that to the motherboard or the computer you will be using 40 pin ribbon cable okay so that is about the types of IO ports and next comes your block diagram of your computer system question number five so first you should write the block diagram then you should list out each and every component used in the computer system and a brief explanation about each component there so this is the block diagram of a computer system any computer system will have the input device and the output device so between input and output you will have the CPU okay which will perform the actions and generate the required output okay again in the CPU you have storage unit arithmetic logic unit and control unit so these are the three parts that you can see in the CPU okay that you should explain in detail now so first one take the input device and explain what is this it is a device 
through which we can enter the program and the data into the computer. The data is then stored and processed with the help of programs. Any kind of task that you want to do, you should give some input to the program. Based on that input only you will get an output. Okay. So, whatever the information that you feed to the computer, for that the device you are going to use is called as input devices and that full unit is called as input unit. Next comes your central processing unit CPU which is also called as the brain of the computer. Like humans, even the computer has a brain which is called as the CPU there. So, this, this unit is responsible for processing all the instructions given by the user. The central processing unit consists of three units namely the control unit, the arithmetic unit and the logic unit and next comes the memory unit. These three parts will be present inside the CPU. In a block diagram itself, it is been mentioned storage unit, arithmetic logic unit and the control unit. So, then what is the use of control unit? This unit is considered to be the nerve system of the computer. As we said, CPU will act as a brain of a computer in that you have the control unit which will actually work as a nerve system ok even the humans also has the nerve system which is used for controlling the signals throughout the body means for, from each part of the body if the communication happens ok if the communication should happen how the information is happening means the information is carried from one part to the another part through the nervous system it is used for controlling the signals or transmitting the signals. The same way here the control unit is acting as a nervous system of a computer. It controls all the arithmetic operations to be performed. It also coordinates the functions of all the hardware units of the computer. The next one is your arithmetic and logic unit. Here what you should write is what is the use of arithmetic unit and what is the use of logic unit? As the name indicates, arithmetic unit is used for performing the arithmetic calculations. Similarly, the logical unit will involve or is used for performing the logical operations that are involved in the program. Any program which has the arithmetic instructions or the logical instructions for executing that or for processing such kind of uh, instructions the unit used is arithmetic and logic unit okay and the fifth part which is the memory unit this is also again present inside the com uh, CPU only so the memory unit is nothing but what a uh, electronic storage space that is present inside the computer okay on the motherboard you can say that okay and the function of this is to store the data and the set of instructions given by the programmer any instructions that is given by the programmer where the instructions will be stored this will be stored inside the memory of the computer and from that memory the pro CPU will fetch the data process then give it to the output device for displaying the output. The computation results are also stored in the memory and they may be used for subsequent computations or sent to the output unit. See, after processing they can store the same processed information can be stored in a computer memory for subsequent computations means after this if you want to process some uh, different task and for that you need the same data you can store it in the computer memory itself or else you can just show the user means you can give that for the output unit for displaying the output for the user and the last one comes your output devices so what the output devices will do it will just 
show you the tasks output means after processing whatever the information you got or the output that you got for the program that should be shown to the user for that you are going to use the output devices output devices receive information from the cpu and present it to the user in the desired from the form the format the user wants in that format only the output will be uh, shown and some common output devices are visual display unit printer etc okay you can have this monitor displays so all these are an example of output devices okay so this was the last question block diagram of the computer so there are totally five questions to be discussed all five is completed so next in the two in the next class we will see the chapter 2 important questions thank you